Good afternoon. Um, I want to welcome a very special visitor today. Uh, as you know, this is the leadership lecture series featuring IIT Madras alumni so far. I think uh, Kanwal is our first non-IIT Madras I alumnus. He's an alumnus of IIT Bombay. So um, we want to welcome him to our midst. He is actually a legend among IIT alumni. He has done some really wonderful things for the IIT alumni movement in general. And so even though he's not an IIT Madras alumnus, we are proud to have him here as, as our speaker today. Um, he has done his uh, bachelor's in electrical engineering from IIT Bombay. He also has an MS in electrical engineering, as well as honorary doctorates in both business and engineering from Michigan Tech. He's a board member on the IIT Bombay Heritage Fund, and he has also founded the Kanwal Reiki Schools of Information Technology at both IIT Bombay and Michigan Tech. Uh, what he's going to talk to you about today is his entrepreneurial journey. And he does have a wonderful track record as an entrepreneur that I'm sure he will um, um, deal with in his talk. He was the first Indo-American founder and CEO to take a venture-backed company public on NASDAQ. He co-founded and built Thai into the largest global network of Indian entrepreneurs. And he co-founded Inventus where he applies his energy and time to establish a leading India-US venture franchise. He uh, has a long history of uh, entrepreneurship, and I believe that he's going to take you through his journey during his talk, so I won't steal his thunder. I now welcome Kanwal to deliver his lecture. Yeah. So I've been to almost all the IITs several times, and I think this is maybe my third or fourth, maybe even fifth visit to IIT Madras. Yeah. I, th I think I came here first time back in 2000 or maybe 99. Yeah, I have, I'm retired in, in, in some fashion, if you tell only about 12 hours a day as retirement. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I haven't had a full-time uh, job since uh, I left Novell in '94, and uh, what I do now in Ventus Capital you know, is to work with the entrepreneurs in India and in Silicon Valley, Indian entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley, and it's a damn good you know, job to have because uh, I would have done this freely and voluntarily, but it's a very you know, profitable and lucrative thing to be doing. And that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. I left in 1967, you know, and if you look back in 67, you know, some people here probably were, you know, maybe are my age, you know, but remember 67 was a very bad year in India. 66 was a year of famine you know, when uh, you know, there was a big crop failure in India and uh, there was a big shortage of food. And the U.S. was helping India you know, with a free wheat under a program called PL480. Yeah, you know, public 480 was a big program under which U.S. was shipping huge amount of wheat to India. And the Indians uh, were not very grateful. They were the most vocal you know, opponents of U U.S. in the United Nations. And that was the year the Vietnam War was really hot. And the Indians were leading charge at this America time after time after time, you know, that the U.S. You know, is being imperialist and get out of, of, uh, of Vietnam. And Perry Johnson, you know, being a Texan, he says, you know, you know, what's the matter with you guys? You know, you're starving, you know, and, and being uppity at the same time. So he cut off the PR-480 food supply to India, you know, suspended it. And the Indians were, you know, Prime Minister India, Lal Bahadur Shastri said, you know, we will do 100 billion drops, you know, before we bow our head. So that was the bad drop under which when I went to U.S. And there was this image of India, Indians, third world, third rate, helpless, helpless people, starving, but very uppity, you know, very proud, <laughs> uppity people, you know, you know, sanctimonious. So that was the, the tad, you know, that every Indian was attached with. 
and your dad there. And uh, yeah, 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 you're nice guys, but you know, you know very sanctimonious. Is so, you know, I draw there from IIT Bombay, and I'm feeling pretty proud and good about myself. But uh, you know, everybody would you know, have this you know, you know notion about all the Indians are starving in the street. But there was also this other side of the thing, you know, Indians were new thing in America. And, uh, and you know, and I'll give you my, my story. Yeah, this uh, professor, you know, you, know, you know, who was sort of assigned to me at the department, he's, you know, he, t he told me that, you know, I know you are from India. I know you will have trouble keeping up with the, you know, the students here. You know, you know uh, I'm sure your education is substandard. You know, you are here in the first world, you are Merita, and I don't want you to fall behind. I want you to make sure that you ask for help when you need it. I said, uh, yes, sir, I will do it. And he went on to tell me how to use telephone, you know, to ask for help. So then we had this uh, first, first, uh, you know, shotgun quiz, you know, this surprise test, and I aced it. And this professor tells me and says, you know, before anything else, I want to remind you that we don't cheat in Merita. You know, there was a presumption of, you know, that I was cheating. And, and the six weeks later in the second test, he stood behind me for a whole hour. And, and uh, I asked it again, and he said, you know, if you're cheating, you're very good at it. <laughs> uh, so that's what we had to put up with back then. You know, I, th I think uh, the Indian image is totally different now. You know, Indians are seen as a very smart, you know, people. But this journey was a you know, journey of my life and many other people you know, who started in cities you know, and then worked their way up. By early 70s, mid 70s at universities, you know, there was a sense that this is something special about Indians. You know, they are smart. You know, they are good in math. You know, you know, they, you know, and uh, and you know, they are hardworking. They are very positive people. And by you know, mid to late 70s, that was also true in industry. You know, the image had de developed of. Uh, you know, smart engineers, smart programmers, you know, their designs work, their software is now very good. But this image became very single dimensional. You know, you know, you know nerdy tatties. Uh, positive images, you know, series were good and all that. But, uh, you know, but that image that very much, you know, that established. And some of us, you know, I, I ended up in Silicon Valley in 1971. You know, at the dawn of the of the whole, you know, revolution there. You know, in '71, you know, if you looked around, the startups in the valley were Intel, National, AMD, Apple had not happened yet, and uh, you know, those are startups. You know, Sun, Apple, you know, you, you know, all these things that you know, they were much later. So I grew up in the valley, you know, as you know, with my job as engineer. By late '70s. You know, by the time I was 35, 36, you know, 1980, 81, I had reached the top round of the technical lad ladder. You know, senior principal engineer, and that was the highest you could go as a as an engineer. And I was only 35, 36, and I'm looking around and saying, hmm, you know, what happens to me now? You know, they, you know there's no more, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, steps to climb, right? And then I noticed that people who were working for me, you know, the people I was training, you know, they were getting promote, promoted into management ranks. So one day I went and talked to my senior, you know, senior my managers, managers. He says, you know, have you thought of you know, me as a manager? He said, no, of course not. You're too valuable for us to be wasted as a manager. I said, oh, that's nice. That's very, very good. I feel, you know, and I said, who makes more money? Um, a senior staff engineer or this first level manager? Of course, manager does. <laughs> you know, and I said, I don't want to be a senior staff engineer. I want to be a manager. But there was no examples of Indian you know, getting into management ranks. And uh, yeah, the, America is a wonderful place, but yeah, they still, you know, everything needs to be proven. And there was a fear that you know, the, uh, people may not want to work for an Indian manager. You know, you know, all those fears have been laid to rest now, but back then there were real fears. And I started to scratch my head, you know. Yeah, it's nice to be a senior staff engineer, but I don't know, you know, in that I want to be doing this for the rest of my life. And I definitely didn't want to get into real estate or, or Amway, 
and yeah, some many other things. You know, I saw many other people doing. Indians were very big in real estate business. They were good in mathematics. Real estate business is by and large mathematics, <laughs> and and yeah, they, they were buying two, three, four, five, six houses. I did uh, buy four houses myself. You know, I, I don't want to say I didn't want to do it, but I didn't enjoy doing it. And uh, Amway is the American way. You know, it's a one of those you know multi-level marketing steam. You know, where you sell soap to your friends, <laughs> and then they sell to their friends, and. Uh, then I saw this story you know, that this person, you know, David Jackson, who used to work for me at a new company. You know, he became an entrepreneur, and he had a new company called Altos Computers. You know, Altos was one of the original hotbots. You know, it was a GAT-based you know, CPM machine. And it was a very high-profile startup around 1980-81. And you know, this is around the time Apple was you know, also launched. And David Jackson, you know, was an immigrant from England. And he had come from, you know, come to work you know, in my lab. He was a, my, my sort of technician slash junior engineer and worked for me for two years. And he left to uh, do the startup. And I started to, you know, think about it. I said, David Jackson, you know, yeah, he's a smart guy, but he's no IITian. <laughs> and uh, he's an immigrant like me. And he left his job to become an entrepreneur. Why can I be an entrepreneur? And you know, that thing started to eat at me. And uh, you know, I'm doing very, very well financially, making $75,000 a year in salary. This is 1981. $75,000 a year in salary in 1981 is close to $300,000 a year in salary right now, purchasing power parity and all that. Nice house, couple of cars, happy family. You know, you know, son and daughter, you know, one year old and four year old. And uh, so I told my wife that I want to leave my job and I want to become an entrepreneur. And she got very, very worried and upset. He says, yeah, what's, what's the problem? You know, why aren't you happy? We have a nice home, nice states. You know, we have all the you know, things you know, that your uh, you know, upper middle class family does. You know, and everybody respects you at the job. Why aren't you happy? You know, is it me? I said, no, it has nothing to do with you. It's the damn David Jackson, who has become an entrepreneur. He used to work for me, and I'm here still holding a job. And it became very, very hard for me to live with myself, you know, as a lifer at a job when David Jackson was an entrepreneur. So after a few you know, weeks, uh, my wife said, you know, do whatever you need to do to be happy. But make sure that there's a food on the table for the tits. You know, I don't want our tits to suffer. I said, uh, yeah, I'll make sure that yeah, that's not a problem. If tits are going to starve, and I'll, I'll yeah, swallow my pride and do that a job. And so uh, in 1981, the world was changing. The world was changing very rapidly. That was the year IBM PC was announced. And uh, yeah, there was this in the air, that whole world of computing is going to turn upside down. And the mainframes from IBM, big mini computers from other people, were going to be replaced with the, in this new paradigm of distributed computing. You know, the desktop PCs, the workstations, the servers, and uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So the, the entrepreneurship happens when the world is changing very rapidly. And then in the middle of all this thing, you know, uh, Intel, you know, Digital, and Xerox jointly announced a protocol for networking called Ethernet. You know, that there's a hardware standard you know, that you know, could be used to internet all the devices. And they also announced that you know, they will have chips ready in about three to four years you know, to you know, make the Ethernet possible. 